Hey, how's it going out there, folks? Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, depending on where you're at here on this fine Friday. Finally made it to the weekend. November 22nd, 2024 is the date, 1233 p.m. California time here. Uh, latest activity shows a 2.5, also a 1.4 here across the California area. Uh, getting a pretty good cluster of earthquake activity here across the Taiwan region. We'll check that out here in just a second. I do want to show you guys the latest updated uh, risk assessment here from the Icelandic Med Office showing the overview here of the Savarsingi region. Uh, of course, where we're watching our most recent eruption here that took place here across this Fisher area. Uh, notice the lava flow here. One of the more advanced areas here that we've seen over the last couple eruptions making its way all making its way all the way down here to the Blue Lagoon parking lot. Now the Blue Lagoon here and the Blue uh, um, water area on the map, Savart Singhi power plant here. They're doing a pretty good job of diverting the uh, lava flow over and off here to the southwest. But uh, it did happen to uh, eat up the parking lot out there. Uh, but it does look like the berm is doing uh, what it's designed to do, and that's to uh, prevent uh, damage out there uh, for that region. Of course, you know, it's who's to say, you know, something else might not happen out here in terms of maybe a, a magma intrusion directly underneath this area. It's very possible. This is literally, you know, just a hop, skip, and a jump away from a very active area. And it's a dangerous situation if you really think about it. But a lot of people love going out there, the tourist area, and, uh, you know, doing their thing out there in the Blue Lagoon. Got some uh, beautiful pictures out there. But, man, too dangerous for me. I, I don't think I'd want to be around uh, this much action. I love volcanoes, but uh, <laughs> a little dangerous. So, anyway, that's the most recent updated assessment map uh, that was put out there from the Icelandic Med Office and um let's see where did that go where did the most recent one go double check that because they have there it is uh, they did put out an update here today it looks like let me blow this back up so we can see a little bit um looks like the activity here across the uh, region is fairly stable since yesterday uh, the progress of the lava tongue the uh, you know the advancing uh, front of it is quite slow um, and the risk assessment down here of course uh, includes the Savart Singhi area in the in the red the main area of course for further eruptive activity in terms of um, uh, fissures going to be in this series of uh, uh, in this area right here in the purple so far we have yet to have any um, fissures open up outside of this region but you know it's always a possibility uh, Again, it's just right there, too. It's a little scary. A little sketchy. I would I would use that terminology there. But uh, anyway, risk assessment in the red there for further future lava flows and whatnot. Uh, eruptive fissure events here in the purple and so on. Grindavik down here uh, for now. Looks like they're in the least hazard area. But uh, again, we've watched this over the last year um, continue to inflate. Uh, erupt in certain areas and then uh, you know deflate and whatnot and then rinse and repeat uh, the current uh, G let's see where the uh, GPS measurements are right here notice the uh, graph right here indicating vertical displacement we've been doing that since about August here since our last eruption this year been steadily climbing up we reached a uh, breaking point here recently in the last a uh, couple days where we where we're seeing our most recent eruption notice the droppage there so um eventually this co should come to a complete halt in terms of the eruption being called over and then we should see a repeat scenario again of a um, inflation event followed up a couple months later by another eruption somewhere but still it's a you know it's a little dangerous to uh me anyway in, in in common sense uh, to be literally right there across that area where we're seeing ongoing eruption uh, activity here over the last year but I guess authorities know what they're doing and uh, for me I think I'll, I'll pass on that one all right earthquake activity what's going on out here for earthquake activity across the globe 
Got a pretty good swarm out here across the Taiwan area. Now, the USGS here only showing uh, what looks like one earthquake here on the map. That's not right. Uh, 4.9 from early this morning. There's definitely uh, a handful more in that same area uh, in the four range. I'm not for sure why USGS is not reporting that activity, but uh, getting a pretty good swarm of activity here earlier this morning in the Taiwan region. Uh, some deeper activity here underneath the area of the uh, East China Sea region, it looks like. Actually, that's a fairly shallow earthquake. There is some deeper movement a little bit further up north here. It looks like around that subduction zone, the uh, Kamano Ridge 3.6 coming in earlier this morning, it looks like as well. That, of course, not shown up on the USGS map as well. Um, Curl Kamchatka, 4.6 from earlier this morning. Still think this region uh, is capable. Well, we know it's capable. The question is when it's going to happen in terms of larger scale mega quake potential. Uh, I think it's quite high out here right now. We haven't seen a, a large earthquake on this area in quite a while. And I'm talking something above a 7. Uh, the New Zealand area, a couple threes down there. Really quiet out here across the New Guinea area, Vanuatu, Fiji area today. That's not going to stay quiet for a very long. I'm sure that will fill in uh, quite nicely here soon. Uh, hot spot activity. Well, let's see. I'm guessing we'll probably see that stir up back here across the Peru Chile Trench. There's a, a little sequence of events out there um, in the fracture zone just off the Chile coast here right around this region in the uh, chili rise area this is a uh, again a fracture zone normally when we see activity out here uh, earthquake activity we'll watch for further amplification of strain on the peru chili trench and that uh, should start to stir up looks like um, this was earlier this morning about three o'clock my time since then there's been a, a handful of newer earthquakes in this area so we'll continue to watch that region just a little hot spot area down there uh, Middle America Trench up north, fairly active as well. It looks like around the Costa Rica area. There's a 4.3 out here in the uh, close to the Cocos Ridge area. Amplifying little conditions here across this area of the plate boundary. Older movement there across the Middle America Trench from yesterday. Uh, let's go ahead and check out the states here, see what we have going on for uh, this fine Friday. Minimal activity out here across the uh, oil fields of Texas and Oklahoma. The majority of this here from yesterday. Let's take a look at the last 30 days, though. Been quite active out here in various areas of Texas. Uh, the oil fields, to be exact. Quite a few of them, just in this area of Texas alone. Over 500 earthquakes in the last 30 days. And that's just the ones they're reporting out here. No telling how many are unaccounted for or undocumented. But, uh, yeah, it's a lot of earthquake activity out here. Today, a little bit less active. Nothing going on across the eastern portion of the country. Uh, through Yellowstone here, nothing showing up on the map. Um, but let's just go over and double check that real quick. See what we're looking at. Looks like uh, some wind events coming in again. Real quick glance at the weather up there just to verify. See what we got for some wind gusts because that will show up. Looks a little windy out here across Yellowstone. So some of these uh, seismograph stations that are exposed to the elements will show uh, uh, the outside noise. Not a whole lot in terms of precipitation up there, but it does look like some wind is being measured there uh, across the area. I'm not really seeing a whole lot of uh, <clears throat> earthquake activity out there for now. A couple spiky ones there from last night. Very small, very small. Those are probably 0.1. Uh, or so, somewhere around there. Not a one magnitude, but a point one. All right, uh, the rest of the country out here for the Pacific Northwest, dealing with a whole bunch of rain and wind, which is fine by me. No, uh, really not a whole lot of earthquake activity. One, 2.3 on the uh, Seattle Fault there from today. But uh, generally light movement up there. Northern California, pretty quiet. Not a whole lot going on there. Got some more rain across this area. I'll cover that here in a little bit. Uh, Southern California, 2.5 map and above, pretty quiet. Not a whole lot going on here in terms of anything above that magnitude. A couple smaller quakes here outside of Corona. Uh, very small microquakes, 1.4 to 1.2. But other than that, uh, 
Not a whole lot going on across the West Coast for now. Up into the Alaska area, a few earthquakes up there. 4.3 from just after midnight, looks like, along the Aleutian Trench. Aside from that, uh, the typical subduction zone boundary uh, earthquake activity. Really not a whole lot of sufficient movement going on there. Same for Hawaii. Overall, it's somewhat of a uh, somewhat of a quiet day, aside from that little swarm there across Taiwan. Uh, the largest magnitude after midnight so far is going to be this five-pointer uh, well south here of Africa along the uh, plate boundary out here in the little fracture zone. But really, it's been, uh, it's been a little quiet out here. All right, let's check out space weather activity here real quick, and then we'll get into the weather department. Um, not a whole lot expected here from the visible disk sunspots. They are all kind of just sitting there, fading away, or just they're really not a whole lot expected from these areas. There is a couple different regions here. Deeper, darker, close proximity colors there on that sunspot region that indicate some magnetic complexity there complexity there within that sunspot group. So that is definitely going to be an area to watch here in the coming days. Uh, 3905 and another region out there. Looks to be fairly complex, folks, in the uh, sunspot department. Complexity department, 15% chance for X-flare. Proton event still somewhat elevated, although that has died down overnight. M-flare at 60. C-flare around 99% chance or so. But uh, again, there's that active region out there on the southeastern quadrant of the sun. Looking uh, pretty bright here on the UV image of the sun. Also back across the northeastern um, area of the sun. So this is southeastern, northeastern up here. That's way out there. Not yet visible on the Earth-facing side. That looks quite active as well. So we're going to watch for that in the coming days. And uh, we'll get a little bit better view of what uh, it may be capable of doing. But uh, either way, flare threat has been bumped up a little bit due to the uh, these newer sunspots there on the southeastern edge of the sun. No major roars in the forecast there for now, folks. Uh, Storm Prediction Center out here. Uh, minimal risk for some thunderstorm activity out here around my neck of the woods. Looks like about Yuba City northward into Redding and along the coastline. That uh, is due to a low pressure system offshore. That is bringing uh, quite a bit of rainfall out here to the uh, Pacific Northwest and California. Uh, a number of low pressure systems here. I believe this one out here is the original bomb cyclone. If we put this into motion here. Uh, we can only go back the last 12 hours or so. Uh, but this was the original uh, low pressure system that was up here. Now it's diverting down here. We're getting that weather effect here with another new low pressure system developing to the east. Very complex system out here that's stirring up quite a bit of moisture, tapping in uh, to some of that atmospheric river activity. Unfortunately, here for the folks that love the rain, we got a split flow going on here. Uh, just above Hawaii, taking that atmospheric river and streaming it well north. Just a little bit here left to tap into from these low pressure systems, but it looks like that uh, that jet stream feature out there is uh, a little odd. Definitely a little odd to see that much of a, uh, a sharp diversion in the uh, jet stream. That's pretty crazy. So we'll see what this one has... Uh, to offer it looks like for the most part well Sacramento's getting quite a bit of rainfall right now on the eastern side of the valley over here up into the Sierras uh, outside of Chico here where I'm at limited uh, we've seen uh, I picked up an almost another two inches of rainfall um, last night and early this morning so on top of the five inches that I already got, that's almost seven inches of rainfall we've got in the last couple days here. And uh, the ground was super dry, so it, it was very much thirsty out here. Goodness. Uh, I, for one, am not going to be a complainer of the weather unless it's above 110, 100 degrees, then yes. But when it rains, that is life. Everything depends on the rainfall out here. So um, I'm ready for some more. Everything's kind of soaked up into the ground. Seven inches, you think, would cause some flooding. And there has been some localized flooding out here. Uh, but in your typical concrete zones there where there's no drainage system. But the, the ground, 
Oh, yeah, it's been loving this rainfall. Uh, that should divert a little bit further up north here from the Sacramento area throughout the day. Uh, in fact, it looks like we're starting to get a little wave here that should funnel up this direction, uh, being caught up with that low pressure system there that's way up north. Uh, let's show the uh, GFS model here for the west coast. And there's that massive secondary low pressure system that's going to continue to spin up northward. Uh, tapping in a little bit here to that moisture. Uh, yeah, it's, it should funnel north a little bit, but uh, I don't know. I think we're done with the heavy stuff. We'll get some a few more showers. And then as we head towards early next week, a little bit more precipitation. Uh, Southern California may get in on some precipitation as well as we head towards next weekend. And then uh, after that, uh, I guess we'll have to see because that's a ways out there. That's in, almost in the second week of December for the West Coast. Uh, for the rest of the country out here, we'll put this model into motion here and see what we have. Um, a little bit of precipitation out here as we head towards early next week. Really not any anything... Uh, major I mean some cold air massive low pressure system out here with some snow and colder air across a good portion of the country uh, that's going to bring down the uh, the temperatures well below normal out here for a good portion of the uh, northeast and uh, the Ohio area a little bit warmer out here for California but uh, yeah we'll kind of see what happens here it's good to have all these little mix-ups could you imagine just having one dominant weather pattern here of just boringness? That is okay for some people if you don't like the weather, but uh, I'm a weather guy. I like to see things stirring up out here. All right, uh, what else we got? Uh, I was going to show you guys this live from Iceland site here. They're getting a couple more webcams up. It looks like something happened to their site recently, um, but uh, it's a good site to check out for the latest eruption there across Iceland couple different webcam images you can use I like the other layout personally I don't know why it got switched up um, but there's another visual of the ongoing eruption some fountaining going on off, off over here uh, but of course this will slow down and eventually die out here probably within a day or so um, could linger a little bit longer but uh, that's been how most of the eruptions in the past have been going of course, with the depletion of the magma below up to the lava field above, you know, it may take another couple months or so to see a, another repeat cycle out here and another eruption somewhere around the region. Uh, for now, folks, enjoy your Friday. Seismograph stations out there all looking calm, clear, and not a whole lot of chaos there on the seismograph station. So uh, we'll see how this day uh, progresses. Have a good uh, Friday. We'll catch you guys back out here a little bit later on this evening for the Friday night update. Stay safe out there, guys, and uh, we'll see you soon. Make sure these Earthquake 3D bells are on. Oh, I see what happened. Okay, all right.